All right, so check it out. I picked up this 124th scale integrated rapid recovery system from DSM Off-Road when I was at USTE. I had a booth set up there, gave me a cool little uh, micro banner, and I use this product on my 110th scale vehicles. I thought I'd give this 124th scale a try. Now this is the uh, internal system, not the one that hooks up to your bumper directly, but this actually replaces this rear shock mount. Got a little pulley on it. I'll show you that here in a second. And then, so we detach up front, go around the pulley and back out, and it has an eyelet hook that mounts to the bumper. And then this would all sit through it. So uh, let's cut this open and have a quick look at what's inside. And we have stickers, which we all know every good RC parts company better include the stickers because we love those. Well, we have the little winch mounting bracket that goes on your bumper. These look to be a really nice quality 3D printed part as well. Much better than my 3D printer does. Yeah, we got your little pulley, and this completely replaces this rear shock mount. And we'll mount this pulley down on the inside. Then we have our kinetic band, aka a bungee cord. And that's a got a lot of grip to it. Oh. Well, we uh, get this shock tower off and get it installed. I think I'll probably have to drill a couple little holes and mount some screws through there in order to put this piece on the bumper. I'll make sure I got my clearance when my hood is shut. It shouldn't be too bad to uh, install this, so... Should be this screw, this screw, and that looks to be about it on the that side. I gotta remove the wheel, and I should have access to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera to speed the process up, and then we'll go into a detailed look at how I did it. Well, so I have the basics installed. Now in the front, you will need to provide your own hardware. You just drill two small holes in the bumper, and that screws right in, no problem. With the rear, that went on no problem as well. Everything fit perfectly. And it was uh, three screws. There's one hidden behind this little shock reservoir. And after that, now, now that he does include in installation instructions for all the different versions of the SCX24 that are currently available. But so what we need to do is feed the cable through the ferro lead. And then... You want to weave your way back through here, being careful not to go anywhere that's going to end up binding around anything. That's a, there we go. I'll have to do a little at a time. Feeding that on back. I've got a little bit of extra cabling in mine too, which makes it a little more difficult. See if I can get a pair of tweezers or needle nose. Here's needle nose. Got it. I'm gonna pull that on through. Up the back and around the pulley. Okay, we're around the pulley. You should be able to take this right around to here. I'm going to run mine 
back up and through. Only that sit right there for now. You have to undo one of your body mounts. Oops. And this should sit right in there. I like mine a little bit tighter, so I think what I'm actually going to do is take the other one off. I'm going to run it around and in this peg over here. That way I can keep a little more tension. I'll put those screws back in off camera so that'll go around. Then we come down here. Make sure you're around the pulley properly. These little things sure are difficult to reach around inside of. There we go. Around the pulley, put the hatch, and it should just pull out now. So that's hangs on pretty good and then right back into place. That's the install part of this. And, uh, you know, other than having to try to fit my fat fingers through all the framework, the install was really easy on it. It didn't take very long. And if I wasn't doing it on camera, it would have gone even quicker. So I'm going to put the other two screws back in, uh, mount the body down, throw a battery in it, and let's get this thing out and uh, see if we can get this tested and see how much it can really climb extra with it. So we'll see you out on the trail. All right, I had to put a log at the top to connect to, so let's give it a try. Oh, it came unfastened. Let me reattach that. It wasn't the most secure spot, but it was doing it. Hopefully I got that in there a little better. Nice. I made it up and over that time. All right, so I got this bridge set up at a pretty steep angle. There's no way it could do it on its own. Prove that here. So I'll go ahead and pull up and hook up the DSM and see if we can get to the top.
So there it is. I think it does pretty good. Uh, not too bad a test. I didn't have the best stuff to hook to throughout this test, but it did pull itself up. I can see we're having a second one that uh, detaches, so you could hook it on and off for longer climbs would be a good thing. Well, thanks for checking out this test. Hope to catch you on the next video. Thank you.